Today, we're talking about can AJ beat Usyk in the rematch? So first, we're gonna talk about a couple theories that people have, some criticisms of AJ, and if I agree with them or not. Then I'm gonna give you guys my idea of if I was in his training camp, what I would recommend. And then finally, we're gonna end with, does he actually have the skills to beat Usyk in the rematch? So first, let's talk about the criticism I have seen from people online and whatnot. The biggest thing I've seen, probably one of the number one criticisms I've seen is, AJ needs to let his hands go. He needs to throw more punches. He would he he didn't let his hands go. He didn't throw enough. This is simply not accurate. It's just not accurate whatsoever in terms of what the actual stats say. So let's look at a couple fights and look at actual statistics on what AJ did and what he's done in the past. So let's look at the Ruiz rematch, for instance, right? He didn't have high volume in that rematch, but he still threw decent enough to win. In that fight, he had 373 punches. Not bad for a heavyweight. For the Pulev fight, even though it ended in the ninth round, 310 punches. Now, a few more rounds, he probably would have been closer to 360 maybe, maybe a little bit more than that, but that gives you a rough idea there. Now, if we look at older AJ, a little bit more younger AJ, how many punches did he throw in the TACAM fight? In that fight, he threw 454 punches, and that was only with the, you know, it ending in the 10th round. So a couple more rounds, maybe 500 max. So that gives you a sense of how many punches he's thrown throughout several of his fights. Well, how many did he throw in the Usyk fight? He threw 641 punches in the Usyk fight. That's a lot of volume for a heavyweight. That's a significant amount of volume for a heavyweight. And compared to Usyk, Usyk threw 529. So AJ actually threw more volume than Usyk. So this idea that he didn't let his hands go or he didn't throw enough punches, it's just not true. He, he absolutely tried. Now, a huge portion of it, 427 of his punches were jabs, and only 52 of them landed. So his total land percentage for all of his punches was 19%, and that is the biggest difference in this fight. Compared to the Pulev fight, he landed 37% of his punches. In the Ruiz fight, he landed 20, he landed 28% of his punches. And in the TACAM fight, he landed 33%. So it's safe to say AJ normally, when he has a more stationary target in front of him, can land 30 plus percent or right around 30% of his punches. So to say that he needs to throw more volume, he threw a significant amount of volume. It just wasn't landing. So let's talk about the next thing that people talk about. And this kind of goes along with this as well. And that is he needs to throw combinations. Why didn't he throw any combinations like he used to? This is, I think, a little bit inaccurate in, te in terms of their mindset of if he threw more combinations, he would have been able to land more punches. The problem is the general concept of throwing combinations is that you have someone in front of you that you already know the distance of to land those combinations. If you don't know the distance, which if you can't land a jab, you certainly aren't gonna be able to land a right cross or, a, or an uppercut or any of those big shots that you wanna throw. Without knowing that distance, you're just going to waste energy by missing your punches. And then on top of it, leave yourself wide open for counter shots. I don't think punch combination is the real problem here with AJ. If you can't get a sense of distance from your opponent, exactly where they are to land those combinations it doesn't matter how many combinations you throw you're just wasting a lot of energy trying to throw combinations so the final thing i saw people say was aggression he needs to make it scrappy he needs to be more aggressive he needs to be that bulldozer style that he had before and this to me is probably the worst advice i've seen people say the reason i say that is we saw with Chizora, right? He did pretty effective, you know, technique of being aggressive at the beginning, but he gassed out after three rounds, basically. And although AJ is significantly in better shape and has better stamina, he still probably can't do 12 rounds of what Chizora was doing. He's gonna get tired. And as soon as he gets tired, he becomes an easy opponent because now he's not moving as well. You thought he was slow in this fight? Imagine if he was exhausted by the eighth round, what would happen? And when you start to get really tired, you, your actual punch resistance goes down. We saw at the end of this fight, the 12th round, AJ almost got knocked out. 
So if he's exhausted and it's the eighth round and he has multiple rounds to go and he becomes an easier target, Usyk's going to pick him apart and possibly stop him. So I just don't like that idea. The other idea is just, you know, higher volume or more aggression. We've seen this also. An example I would probably bring up is when Katie Taylor fought Delphine Pursun. There was a lot of volume and a lot of pressure and a lot of scrappiness from Pursun. But what did up end up happening, especially in the second fight I want to look at in particular? Her work got very muddied by the fact that her pressure really hindered her work. You couldn't tell what she landed clean, what were good shots, what weren't good shots, what landed partially on the glove, what just hit Katie Taylor in the shoulder. Cleaner work is always going to look better to the judges. It's always going to go a longer way with the judges when they can see clean shots than when you're doing these scrappy tactics. It makes it very difficult to recognize good work when that happens. So I just don't think that this is a good idea for AJ overall. Okay, so now I've told you some of the theories people have said, how I don't necessarily agree with them. This is what I would recommend for AJ going into this fight. One of them would be to set more traps and to be more on the defensive and counter punching in this fight. If Tony Bellew can counter punch and land shots on Usyk, I absolutely think AJ can do that as well. And I think in this fight, he got really ramped up. There was obviously a little bit of nerves. And going into this, when Usyk came at him, he tried to, you know, fight fire with fire right off the bat. I understand that. But the problem is that after that, he kept on trying to figure out how he was going to land shots and his jab just wasn't working for him. And he got frustrated. I think setting traps, letting Usyk come to you and then being able to counter him, especially with the right hand, I think that would be a little bit smarter. He needs to calm down, use some of that ring IQ he has, and I think you do a little bit better there. The biggest thing I think AJ needs to do is stay at the current weight he's at. Don't bulk up. I don't like that idea at all. Don't go below what you currently are. I think 240 is a good weight for him. And I think you need to absolutely attack the body of Usyk. Because in this fight, where I saw Usyk really start to look hurt or damaged at certain points, was when AJ landed good body shots on him. He did not like the body work from AJ. It certainly impacted him. And if you want to slow down a highly mobile fighter that can move laterally exceptionally well and forward and backward exceptionally well like Usyk, body shots. Body shots are absolutely the ticket for that. The other thing is, too, head movement from Usyk was phenomenal. How are you going to deal with that? If you can't hit to the head for AJ, go to the body if you can. Slow down Usyk. Then try to land some of those jabs and straight right hands and everything like that that you know will do significant damage. I think if you invest in the body, I think it'll pay off in the end. So, in the end, do I think AJ can win the rematch? I think there is a possibility that he could win the rematch. Do I think it's going to be easy? Absolutely not. Because now Usyk just downloaded exactly how you fight and your fighting style and everything like that. He's going to have another full camp to prepare for the rematch. AJ's a very dedicated fighter. He's great when it comes to getting in the gym, being absolutely just an absolute workhorse in the gym, which I like and I appreciate that a lot. I think that he has the power and he and he has some of the skills to possibly damage Usyk enough to maybe get the win. Would I put money on it? No, I'd probably say that I'd lean towards Usyk in a rematch. But I would not count out Anthony Joshua. And I think that with the amount of talent around him and the people around him, I think that he's going to sit there and watch that footage and see what he can do to possibly affect that second fight. So that's my opinion. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. And with that said, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.